Hello, I'm Grayson Kahn from Mosey, the Museum of Science and Industry, and you're watching Tampa Bay Community Network. Welcome to Culture Vultures. I'm Linda Saul Senna, and I'm so glad you could join us. My guest today is Grayson Calm from the Museum of Science and Industry. You can call it Mosey. Okay, it's easy thank enough. you. It is easier. Welcome. <laughs> thank you. So tell us what's going on these days at Mosey. I'm so excited to get to talk about this because I, I talk to a lot of people, and everyone knows about Mosey, thinks great things about Mosey, but a lot of folks are, I went years ago, I did it. And the reality is, Mosey, just like science and technology, is always changing and always evolving. So we have a ton of new things within the past few years or even happening right now that we're bringing in, including a brand new multi-million dollar exhibit and a lot of other exciting stuff. I think the thing that I always get excited about is when you first walk up, before you even come inside, we have the only driverless car in America that's open to the general public. Can you get in it? Please do. We're really? Hands on. So we want you to get it. In fact, if you ask nicely, uh, we'll even let you step in front of it while it's driving and watch it stop on its own. Oh, yeah. are you serious? Absolutely. That is terrifying. It's amazing. But that's one of the ideas <laughs> with Mosey, right? We take a, a scientific concept or a technology concept that maybe you don't know about. You, d you never heard of it or you're just not sure about it, like a driverless car. Or you've read about it, but you've never had an opportunity to really touch it. Exactly. We do 3D printing, too, which is similar. A lot of people have heard about 3D printing. Right. You see it done at Mosey. So the driverless car, you don't know how you feel. It would be, sure, it would be convenient, right? If I could just ride in the back with my kids, I'd, I'd get a lot more quality time with them. But at the same token, do I want to let a robot do the driving for me? Do I want to let I trust the computer it? do the driving? Exactly. So what we have is we have a, a shuttle. It's a, we brought it here from Europe. We're the only folks in America with something like this. It's a 12-person vehicle. You stand up inside. And it's, it's not like a car that goes out on the highway. It's more designed to work around pedestrians, like a college campus or a, a downtown area. Oh. And you hop in and you stand on. And one of our steampunks, who are like educator folks, they you, you press go and you tell it where and then you just put your hands in your pockets. There's no steering wheel or anything. And it takes off, it'll drive you to our butterfly garden, it'll drive you to our parking lot. Are you serious? It's amazing. And while it's happening, it's scanning the road several hundred times a second. The, not the road, you're on a, pass, a path. But it scans that path and it can tell if anything, even a squirrel gets in the way and it, when it's a certain distance out, it slows down and then if you get a certain distance, it stops. Uh, and I'll be talking to people, having a conversation on it, and someone will walk by, they don't even realize they're walking by it. They'll step right in front of it, and it hits the brakes. Whoa, well, it just stopped and moves on. Really? It's amazing. You become comfortable with the idea, and you at least get to have a better feel for what it's really all about. Then you can make your own decision on whether you're ready for driverless cars on the highway or if you're not, but you can see the technology in action, and that's what Mosey's all about. So yeah, come hop on board our autonomous vehicle, this driverless car. We've had more than 60,000 people. Really? On since we brought it in. And uh, live to in tell. Of yes, every one of them it has yet to, yet to bump anybody. Um, and again, it stops for squirrels. So it's, it's really, it's amazing in that you, <laughs> the way you kind of described it is you, you get on it first and you're really unsure about how it's going to go. And then you ride it for a minute or two and you're, you think it's cool. And then after a while, you kind of forget you're on it. It's kind of like an elevator that goes sideways because it's wow. all handling it. Do you wear seat belts? No, you just stand there. That's great. Do you hold I mean, onto ours, a strap like our, a subway? You, lean, you can lean back. It, uh, ours doesn't pick up a lot of speed. I, it's capable, I believe, of going up to 20 miles an hour, but it goes about three miles an hour in front of most. I feel more better of a about that. Yeah. But, but that's yeah. fabulous that you all initiated that. It's great. Our CEO, Molly Demulinaire, brought this in. Uh, she's really into kind of pushing the limits and getting your getting you, the public, getting everyone at home that chance to, to touch the future. That's what we're really all about at Mosey, and that's been what Molly's really been into. So she brought this in. There's still, there's nowhere else in North America where you can, they'll do special demonstrations where people can ride driverless cars for an hour or a day, but this is 365 days a year at Mosey. Just come and hop in. It's included with your admission and, and check it out. It's, you know, when you think about the power of the technology, um, you know, 30,000 Americans are killed every year in cars on the highway. And we're talking about little babies and moms, and, and 
It shouldn't be that way. It's the equivalent of two fully loaded 747s going down every week. If we could fix that, if we could take the human error out, which accounts for about 90% of all car crashes, imagine the difference that would make in America. Um, and so if we get to the point where we're comfortable with it, that's a, that's a powerful change that we can have happen. Now, in order to have a driverless car, doesn't there have to be something in the pavement that the car is like a off Like of? a wire or a rail? Yes, it's yes. interesting. There are different ways to do it. Um, in downtown Tampa, they're in the process right now of designing a test system for what they call a connected vehicle. I call uh -huh. it a smart road. And basically, that, that setup has the traffic lights and the speed limit signs and the cars all trying to talk to each other to tell you, okay, you can speed up here, you need to move over because there's a disabled car here. And the road does a lot of talking to the cars. But this works totally on its own. And the cars that are being designed right now by companies like Tesla and Audi, yes. they all work on their own. They basically scan the road in front of them and they know when it's not normal and they know when to hit the brakes. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's really something. Wow. Ours is a, a little more controlled because we tell ours where to go in advance. You actually drive it with a video game controller, and you teach it the path, and then you unplug the controller, and you put it on autopilot. Um, so it's a little different from a car that's on the highway where you're like, well, today I want to go to the grocery right, store. Right, right, right. Uh, but we're, we're getting there. And the, the, you know, think of how downtowns would change if we didn't have half of them taken up with parking spaces. I have to say, as a former urban planner, that is dear to my heart. And we, we recently had uh, the director of the Straz Center, Judy Lisi, on talking about the challenges of parking downtown because the Straz has five theaters and they're so popular that oftentimes parking is an issue. It would be transformative. Selfishly, I love the idea that former parking structures could become condos. It can change everything about how you do it. You don't. You hate your hour-long commute to work. Well, clock in the moment you get in the car and start working, and then suddenly you only have to stay at the office for six hours instead of eight because you did an hour's worth of work either way. Or like I said, I feel like I don't spend wow. enough time with my kids. Wouldn't it be great to sit in the back and talk with them while we're driving to school? Uh, That's that phenomenal. Time. So the power to change with these driverless cars is is really something. But the 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 biggest impediment is the, the last bit of technology and also just the public's comfort with it. And that's why you can come to Mosey, come visit us, see what it's all about, and, and try it out for yourself. And, I will, and ask totally, you step I will absolutely do that because right now the idea seems terrifying, but you make it sound like a, a great experience. It's, I will. Pretty, it's pretty cool. And that's not the only new thing we have at Mosey. What, what else? I mentioned 3D printing. That's one of those technologies that you may read about or hear about, the idea that you can take a design in a computer and use a machine to create an object that you can then hold. It, we can use it for fashion and all sorts of things. Well, we do that every day at Mosey. We actually do 3D printing demonstrations live where you come in and you know it starts out as nothing and by the end you have a bracelet or you have a piece of technology and we have this amazing exhibition called 3D printing the exhibition sorry we weren't that creative with the name but the stuff is really cool and it shows all these different ways that this technology can be used uh, you can preserve archaeological sites so say there's an archaeological site that the Taliban is going to blow up in Afghanistan or there's something where just because of the change of the coast it's something that could wash away right or humans are, are destroying it with acid rain right you can create a three-dimensional scan of that, and then you can save that forever. And if you want to study it later, just print out a new one. Or you could have one in every museum in the world because you just print out an exact replica of it. You can print, we're working on technology to 3D print skin and even organs to replace you. You know, you, you look at wow. getting a, a knee replacement, for example. What if they could scan your existing knee? fix the issue, and print you a brand new one that's just like the one you had. Only better. Only better. Only brand spanking new. So these are the technologies. And as you walk through, that is you really see the mind potential blowing. That for is, 3D printing. That is crazy. There's a dad. You know, when you, when you get a prosthetic hand, uh, he had a son who was born with, with a birth defect and doesn't have a hand formed on his arm. Uh, a prosthetic hand, a really amazing one, um, costs tens of thousands of dollars. Yes. Um, but he wanted one that his kid could go play baseball with. So he 3D printed the parts, and he made his son a hand. It cost him like five bucks. It used recycled milk jugs for the plastic. And we have one. The, the family actually donated one of his hands to us. It's there. Uh, so you can see all these different ways. And, and that just like any technology, we talk about driverless cars. There is a side that could be used for other things. We have parts of, we don't have the whole thing, but we have parts of a 3D printed gun 
because there's a, a person who designed a gun and put the plans out on the internet to show that you could use this for anything. Now again, we don't have all the pieces there. We have a couple of pieces to show that it could be done. Um, but you can, you can do that. So just like any technology, even printing books on a, on a printing press, you can print good books and you can print books that people don't agree with. So we try to show that technology for everything, the possibilities, the drawbacks, again, so you understand it, so you get what the future is going to bring and you can make your own decisions. That is fabulous. Now, do you have do you have school children visit Mosey? Oh boy, do we. <laughs> yes, and we love it. We love it. We have um, great school groups that come in and do hands-on science projects. You can come and tour the museum as a school group, but then we also break them out into labs and into camps. We also have, uh, during the summer and the, the winter time, we have uh, amazing science camps where you know kids can learn about rocketry and robots and video game design and costume design, exploring the outdoors. We have so many amazing programs that we do behind the scenes um, as part of our mission because we I think a lot of people think of Mosey as sort of an attraction. And our goal is to be fun. I mean, that's the number one thing. You're not going to learn anything if you don't have fun. So come have fun with us, but you leave with your brain a little bit bigger, and maybe you don't expect that. And so part of our mission is, is to share that, that educational goal while making it fun in a way that you can't get in a classroom. You just you can't do what we do at Mosey in a classroom, especially all the time. You and have that, better toys. We, we do. We have bigger toys. You can't build a giant Tesla coil that zaps bolts of real lightning in your science lab at your middle school, but you can bring your kids to Mosey and have that experience. Or you go into our planetarium. We have this amazing, the Saunders Planetarium. It's, you turn the lights down and we can project the night sky anytime, anywhere in the world. You want to see the night sky on the, the, the day you met your husband? We'll put it up there for you. You want to see the night sky the day Julius Caesar declared himself emperor of Rome? We'll show you what it looked like in the sky above Rome. And then we'll take you on a tour and tell you about the stars and the planets. And that is something, again, that you can't get. Now, we do have great outreach programs. We actually have a kind of a mobile planetarium that we can take into a classroom. Really? And project it up on the, oh, that's on the ceiling. We have telescopes that we can take into communities and, and do a nighttime sky watch. So we have a lot of ways. We actually have a whole mobile science lab that we can bring to schools. And we, we work to have grants and scholarships so we can take those to low-income schools as well as schools that are better off so we can kind of share that knowledge. That's a long answer to that, your question. Oh, no, but that's I'm wonderful. Very proud of what we do. Yes, well, how many, how many young people get to participate in your programs? Boy, our, our, the, the, the people we interact with over the course of a year through our programs and visitation is about half a million. Wow. Um, is this Tampa Bay? This is, is this regionally? Generally, it's regionally. Most of, our, most of our visitors come from the Tampa Bay area or from other parts of Florida. In the past year, we had um, visitors from 55 of Florida's 67 counties. So just about everybody in Florida comes here. Um, and then we have a whole lot of, of visitation from Tampa Bay. And so a lot of school groups. But I, I'll tell you, I see the t-shirts come through because I'm in the museum and I see kids walking through. I'm like, Sebring Elementary School. Wow, that is quite a drive. So we bring kids from, wow. uh, I ran into a, a group from, from Miami. They, brought, they got up piled onto the bus at 4 a.m. and hit the road so they could spend some time at Mosey, see one of our IMAX movies we have. If you've driven by Mosey, you see our big blue dome that we have. And to be inside that and see one of our IMAX movies is just crazy. It's the only IMAX dome theater in Florida. Uh, and, and you basically sit down, and the screen wraps around you. It's five stories tall. We did the math. It's 10,000 square feet of screen. And it's almost like 3D, but without the glasses. Uh, it's super immersive. And that's one thing you ask what's new at Mosey. Um, we, we're constantly bringing in new IMAX films that are really amazing. So if you go to our website, which is mosey.org, M-O-S-I.org, you can see what our IMAX schedule is and come in and check out one of our IMAX movies. Uh, we have ones that were shot by the crew of the International Space Station in orbit wow. and the video the film that came back from them they're shooting with these heavy 70 pound IMAX cameras but in space they don't weigh anything so they put them in the strangest spaces they they push the camera to each other through weightlessness That's it's like so you're interesting. there I, th I thought they were wearing GoPros or something yeah it's called a, it's called a beautiful planet that movie is called a beautiful planet and and we rotate our schedule so depending on you check our website to see we have another one that that we've been running called National Parks Adventure which basically takes you to 30 different national parks it's like you're there and it's like you're climbing up the side of a mountain with you the, with these crazy adventurers uh, they're not crazy they're totally normal uh, you know these these adventures Adventurous adventurers, right? Uh, and you feel like you're there with them. And we've got great white shark movies. I, I, I bet have, you can imagine the plot I of have, that. I have been to the IMAX and found it 
fabulous. Almost overwhelming yes. because of the scale of it. But your description of it is immersive. It really is. And since I am not going to climb to the top of Everest, <laughs> I'm glad you have films that let me experience that. Or do undersea cave diving. Yeah. I mean, that's not going to happen in this incarnation for me. It's just a little no, too scary. No, that's not your Saturday plans? No, no, no. But I love to go there. Plus, your air conditioning is excellent. So I think particularly when the weather in Tampa is warm, which it often is, it is a perfect afternoon escape. It is always 72 and sunny at Mosey. That's what I like <laughs> to tell people. It's always, always nice and air-conditioned. It's never rainy inside Mosey. Um, and so that is a, it is a great escape. And, and we offer so many different programs for folks to, to come and be a part of it. I was talking about our, our mission to reach out to people of all backgrounds. And we have a, a, a special program. I'm so excited. We're the first museum in Florida to have a Museums for All program. Because we try to think, how, how do we get this great experience to be available to everyone? If you don't have a lot of money, how can you still bring your kids to a great afternoon at Mosey? And so we, we worked up a grant to help fund it. And if you have a, uh, an EBT card, a government benefits yes. card, and you qualify for that, um, if you show that, you get in for $3, which is amazing. So you can bring a whole family that up is, to five people. That is fantastic. Place. It's really that great. That is just wonderful because what you get to experience at Mosey is the experience. It's not just an idea. It's a very tangible, tactile, immersive experience. And I was science was never my strong suit, yeah. but I love the, the engagement you get at Mosey. It flips light switches inside kids and adults and seniors that, that just, they won't happen. Even if you're seeing the same stuff on your couch or on your iPad, it, it, it just doesn't click. Like when you're having to help a friend do it or flip big switches or touching things or climbing things or being surrounded by things in the IMAX dome. There, there is a magic of it. And then also, say you go to a planetarium show. The person who's doing the show, it's a live show, is an expert astronomer. And so that question, if you like this, you've got a real person there who's passionate about it, you can ask. We have, a, we have this amazing thing. We have a, a simulated moon base called Mission Moon Base. It's, a, it's funded by NASA, and it's like a lunar colony, like a moon colony. You actually step into a room, and you, you take a rocket ride from Mosey up to the moon, and then you step off, and you have to do all the jobs that you would if you were on a NASA moon base in the year 2070. Drive rovers to go scout for minerals, turn rocks into water, so you, you know, find water and rocks so you can drink, and all these different jobs. Grow fish so you can eat, and everyone has different jobs and roles. And there's a person there who you can ask, and they can fill in those gaps. They, the person, they live on the moon, basically. Having never you know. lived on the moon, that is a pretty crazy idea. Yeah. So you really get to experience. Do you, do you like pick a card and it says, you're the, you're the taking water out of rocks person? You can run up to any of the stations. If you want to drive the rover, go you know, elbow your little brother out of the way and go drive the rover or your son out of the way. I'm driving the rover. You do the, you do the rock testing. And you really can drive a rover? It's, it's a computer simulator. But yeah, basically, it's like, you're, it's, it's like you're in a simulation and you've got tasks to accomplish and use a robot arm to pick up rocks and drill for samples. And it, it's really something. It's very immersive. And it again, sounds like the Martian, the film. Where it it <laughs> does feel a little bit like that. Usually there are other people in there, so you don't feel so stranded. But uh, yeah, that's the idea, to give you a feel for that. And so we have so many hands-on experiences uh, like that with space, with health science, with touching the future. Um, that it's really... Uh, you know, if you haven't been to Mosey in a while, it's definitely worth the trip back because we've got new stuff, things to do, to touch, to share, happening all the time. This is good to hear because, like some of your visitors, I think I thought, well, I went to see a great exhibit there. I saw the exhibit a couple of years ago on the body, which was fascinating. But really fascinating. and I've been to some movies subsequently, but I haven't really been back to the exhibits. And this is making me think I need to explore, especially. The, the passenger vehicle. Driverless car. We call it autonomous vehicle, and mm -hmm. it's one of those things where, depending on different people use different names, but right. you, you get on, you decide what name you like for it. Um, yeah, it's really, it's something. And, and then the other, the other big thing that we're working on now is we are bringing in uh, a major new multi-million dollar exhibit that's, um, that's coming wow. online. Uh, and this exhibit is going to give you a chance, unlike any other, to touch the future. Uh, we've got some images of it we can show. It, and basically, you'll walk through this tunnel of questions and emerge inside and have interactive displays from five different partners. Um, 
And some of them are, uh, one of them is a company called Metro Development that's building connected cities. Verizon is one of the partners with us. We also have Meridian, which is the driverless car company, and then Turin Aviation, which does drones. Uh, unmanned flying oh vehicles, God. not military uses, but uh -huh. all the other uses, delivering packages, checking building construction, uh, trying to get the most plants to grow in a field. You can do all these things with drones. So you, you get in and you can How get hands-on and touch. Well, it, it's, it's each of those different things is being presented in a different way. So with the drone, you would get a feel by interacting with it for all these different uses of what these drones can do and, and how they can, for example, the agriculture, you can send those up even every day to scan a field and see how many plants are coming out and where you can water more, fertilize more, and that's, that's that benefits amazing. all of society. But it, really does, it really makes sense. It does, it does. And all of these things, you see how then they connect. You build a connected city, you deliver packages with drones, you have in that connected city where everyone has high-speed internet access, your Verizon uh, sets you up with a refrigerator that knows when you're running low on eggs and just orders you more. Uh, and then you get in your driverless car that takes you where you need to go. So it kind of connects you to the future and you get a way to experience that. And that exhibit is, is coming online and we're, we're adding that. Um, and it'll be open here as time goes on and, and that's another major multi-million dollar uh, expansion and experience. At Will there be solar panels to provide the energy for We have some solar panels at Mosey. They're mostly done as a demonstration. Um, so, but that is one of the concept things is looking at alternative energy and, and how, you know, whether it's solar or uh, different techniques to generate energy that aren't the old, you know, burn coal. Uh, those are one of the things we want to reach and, and look into the future. That's pretty great. That's really exciting. And it's great for the kids here because science is so much more compelling when you can experience it directly. It, we really have found that, I'll say this, so a lot of people have heard about STEM education. Yes. Um, and we expand that a little to make it STEAM education. So you have science, art. technology, technology, engineering, arts, and math. That's great. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. And the research really shows that, that's, that that matters, is that, that when you work arts into your education, the academics come up, you know, you can't really have science without art as a way to demonstrate it. And so much of art is based on scientific knowledge. So it, it works together so we have all these different opportunities to kind of expand that STEAM learning. And that's what we really, when we bring kids in or adults, they get exposed to that. I love that. Now, you, you also have places that kids can have parties and spend the night. Oh, and, and yes, indeed. We have, and again, I, I mentioned mosey.org, our website earlier, mosi.org. If you go to our website, you can find out about our, our uh, birthday party programs. We have great, um, you know, STEAM-infused, mm -hmm. science-infused birthday parties. We have CSI ones where everybody works together to solve a crime. Oh, that, we, yeah. can adults do that? Yeah, I, I think we can work something out that for you. That sounds really it's engaging. Really and then we have all sorts of other programs, again, camps, uh, uh, Boy and Girl Scout merit badge classes. Um, we do things in Idea Zone, which is our maker space where you can do Minecraft, a video game, and build stuff. So go to mosey.org and click around, and chances are you're going to find something that really fits your family, whether you want to do it together with your kid, whether your kid just wants to go and make new friends and go do it themselves. Uh, tons of options. So you mentioned you have children. How old? I do. I have a four and a half year old and a two year old, and they're a little crazy about Mosey. They are, the four and a half year old is disappointed when I go to work because I don't take him. Ah. With me to Mosey, uh, he's constantly asking about it, and he he loves engaging. And, and they're on the young edge of where I would think you would engage at Mosey. But even my two-year-old, we have Kids in Charge, which is the largest children's science center in the southeastern U.S. Um, really? And so when you go to Kids in Charge, it's all hands-on. It's climbing through things. It's pushing things over and seeing what happens. And and from two to twenty-two, that's fascinating. So they're building things out of blocks. That we have this area called Imagination Playground with these giant foam pieces that you can connect and, and roll balls down and kind of build your own little castle. Oh, and how fabulous. It's totally great. And that, and that is actually one of the places where the two and the four-year-old cooperate on something instead of like, it's mine. No, it's mine. They work together, which as a dad, that's, uh, that's pretty exciting for me to see them actually teaming up on something. And don't you have specials? I, I think I remember a Mother's Day you could get in there. Yeah, often we do, and we change them every year, but that's another reason just uh, whatever time you see this, check out mosey.org, and we'll put up discounts and specials. Um, typically on Mother's Day and Father's Day, we have a deal where um, moms or dads get in free with a, another paid admission, and we have uh, all sorts of specials throughout the year uh, to do it. But uh, even honestly, at full price, it's it's 
it's a great experience because you get so much. There's an IMAX film that's included, a planetarium show. Oh, that's included, fantastic. A live demonstration show from our steam punks, who are our kind of uh, kooky, uh, mad scientists, travel from the future types. They put on a live science show. And then at Kids in Charge, Children's Science Center, the Idea Zone, Maker Lab, and all exhibits all included. And I'm remembering you have a store that has frozen, that has ice cream from space. Or astronaut like ice cream. Yes, I grew up over on the Space Coast, so I, uh, here in Florida, so I grew up eating that stuff. Um, yes, our gift shop is, if you are even 10% nerdy, I'm like 90% nerdy, uh, you will love running around inside that gift shop. Uh, yeah, Elements Gift Shop has astronaut ice cream and cool science things. It has those cool puzzles that like you can't ever figure out how to yes, open. Yes. Um, the kind of Rubik's Cubes of the future. Uh, we have all sorts of things like that uh, that, that are in that gift shop and, and are worth, they kind of add to the exploration when you come to visit. We have a whole outside section too. We have trails that you can go check out. And we have a butterfly garden, which is one of the only oh, ones in the area. Oh, yes. And it is, it is something else to take a, a, a kid or an adult anybody to go in and if you've never really been up close to butterflies to see how they work and see what happens uh, it's a really neat experience to have them sort of land on you and understand a little bit more about the world. One of the things I have to compliment as someone who loves beautiful architecture is that you didn't just hire local folks to to create your buildings you went to some of the foremost architects in this country and that's why the IMAX is such a stunning, stunning structure. It's really something. It's it's a it's fascinating that I work at Mosey because I I always thought it was neat and now I drive there at work and I go up our glass elevator. So the experience of going to the campus is really interesting and really neat. Um, and you you really do explore. You know, you go to the second floor and that's where our 3D printing exhibit is and where our new exhibit's going in. Then you go up to the third floor and that is the exhibit called The Amazing You which takes you through your whole body and how you work from before you were born until after you die. And every stage along the way, and it's kids love it because there's like a whole thing on why you burp and <laughs> things like that. But then there's also much more mature stuff about um, you know, how uh, alcohol can impair you or how organs were working on the ability to, if your organs are failing, to potentially replace them with new ones. And all this kind of cutting edge stuff. Uh, we have a great partnership with a local company here called Sindaver, Synthetic Cadaver, Sindaver. Whoa. And they make fake bodies to be used for practice surgeries. And better it should be on a fake oh, body yeah. than a real oh, one. Oh yeah, and we have one that is almost 24 hours, well not 24 hours, almost all the time we're open in our grand lobby when you come in. Her name is Gwendolyn, they each have a name. I love and it. And it is a skeleton with nerves and veins and arteries and lungs and organs and it all feels almost too realistic and it's kind of stunning. Uh, so one of our steampunks is there kind of showing you, uh, they'll hand you the liver. <laughs> you can hold the liver and that see how it's done. wild. And they're all handmade here in the Tampa Bay area uh, and they've, they've donated one to us so we can share that technology with the world. And, and uh, so by seeing it, not only are you learning about the human body, but you're also learning about, okay, where is my surgeon? What are they learning? What are they learning in school? How are we pushing the limits? How are we making our doctors better and helping them be better? So it's, there's a lot to this it. This level of interactivity is just fabulous. Grayson, I have to tell you, I am jazz. I really, <laughs> I really <laughs> hadn't thought down. about it in a while. Yeah. And you've, you've totally raised my awareness. I definitely want to try the car. Yeah. And, and I want to hold a liver. <laughs> I mean, this be, maybe What a range of things you can do at Mosey in a given to go hold a liver, step in front of a driverless car, and that's, <laughs> that's what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you for being my guest. My your, your enthusiasm is infectious, and this has been a really terrific talk. Well, and I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you all for watching Culture Vultures, and go down and see what's going on at Mosey. Thanks a lot. Sure.